In today's digital age, photos and videos are more than just memories. They are a curated archive of our lives. And I've always found that storing them all can be a challenge, especially when we start adding video to the mix. For a long time, Google Photos has been the most convenient solution for me, but the monthly subscription and some of the potential privacy concerns, I don't think it'd be really worth it for some admittedly excellent features. Making the switch to other services or other alternatives is therefore an enticing prospect, so here's how I did it. Recently, to test what options are out there and to take greater control of my photos while ditching the increasingly expensive cloud subscription, I found the most common answer to be the Synology B Station, which is a recently released personal cloud storage device. And here's my story of how I made the switch and how I did it fairly seamlessly. There were three main reasons behind my decision, and I'm sure a lot of people are gonna have the same thoughts. Firstly, there was a cost. Google Photos offers free storage for high quality photos up to a certain amount. I think that's around about 15 gigabytes nowadays, but with slight compression, that does actually reduce the overall image fidelity. Upgrading to store original quality photos requires that monthly subscription fee, and these fees may seem insignificant initially, but they can add up significantly over time, especially once, like me, you start to go beyond that two terabyte storage plan. And after years of collating images, videos, and lots of other files, I've really found myself managing my cloud library more than I should have to. This drive will continue to work for years, even without a monthly fee. There's also the privacy and control element. Cloud storage services store your data on their servers. And while most have robust security measures, and I'm sure Google do as well, the idea of someone else effectively holding my entire photos library to ransom for that monthly fee wasn't really something that I was all happy with given the increasing costs. I also wanted the peace of mind that comes with having complete control over my photos and videos. There was the added benefit that I could give family members access so that they could keep their precious memories backed up without being tied into a monthly subscription fee or me being tied into having to pay that for my family members. And of course, that leads me to the final reason that I was looking at another solution, family backups. I'm not the only person who wants to back up their photos, videos, and files in my family group. Personally, I would have just opted for a completely offline solution with external drives and be content with manually transferring things over. And I do this a lot with SD cards and SSDs anyway. While that's great for me, one person, my family members are not really tech literate or reliable enough to ensure they back up their files by plugging devices into a PC or Mac and then transferring them to an external drive. Some don't even own a computer, so a solution that removed as many layers of frustration was a must for me. So here's why I settled on the B station. Firstly, it comes with a one-time fee, or hopefully a one-time fee, as it provides local storage for my photos, eliminating ongoing subscription costs. Plus, I have complete control over who can access my precious files, photos, and videos. It isn't a perfect storage solution by any means, and it's not exactly cheap, but it is cheaper than a few years of similarly rated Google Photos storage, as this comes in at four terabytes. Secondly, it's under my control. The drive will live at my house, is connected to my network, and means I can troubleshoot anything internally before I'd let others access it. And finally, my previous experience. I've used several Synology products over the years, so this felt like a really good compromise between convenience and cost. Setting up the B station was an absolute breeze, I have to say. It comes pre-configured, so all I had to do was connect it to my network, power it on, and then use the Synology Assistant software to take me through the remaining steps. Within minutes, I had access to the B station interface through a web browser or the mobile application. The interface is clean and it's user-friendly, with a little bit of a hint of Google Photos, or at least all the builds in there, making navigating files and my photos super easy. There are some potential pain points though, and the biggest of those was initially transferring my content over from Google Photos. I was really worried about the arduous task of migrating years of files from my Google account to a new service or a new backup option. However, those worries were really unfounded after moving my photos from the Google Photos application to BStation, as it was actually really straightforward thanks to the Google Takeout function. So to initiate the transfer, it's as easy as logging into your Google account, then going to takeout.google.com, sign in here, and the rest is pretty straightforward. From there, I selected Google Photos for export and ensured all photo albums were included. I toggled that on, and this was chosen to capture my entire collection. 
and also to ensure proper metadata transfers like dates and locations. It's also worth noting your Google account language for some reason needs to be set to English before even attempting to create this export. This step might seem unnecessary, but according to Synology, at least Synology's support forums, it helps the B Photos application and application you'll use with this to organize your photos chronologically and visually. Next, I opted for the .zip format when exporting this for easy handling, or at least handing over to the B station, and chose the one-time export for delivery. Once the export process was complete, which definitely took a while, I downloaded the zip file containing all of my photos, or hopefully, all of my photos. The B-Station hardware comes with a built-in photo management, as I mentioned, called B-Photos. Within B-Photos, I designated a folder on the B-Station to store these. This folder can be renamed and organized for future reference based upon my own preferences. For now, I left it as it is. And finally, I used the B-Station desktop app to upload the downloaded zip, which seems really counterintuitive, to that designated folder. The upload process may take a while depending on your photo and video collection, but I will say the B station will keep you updated on the progress so you do know where you stand at any point in time. The secondary pain point for me was why would I choose this solution over traditional hard drives? Well, I will say there's absolutely no argument from me about traditional external hard drives. They're a much cheaper way to store data and can be picked up very easily and cheaply. Like any long-term storage solution, they do come with some of their own drawbacks that to me made the B station a little bit more of an attractive option to me and my family who are probably the reason why I chose this. With an external hard drive, your files are only accessible on that connected drive. The B station though allows me to access my photos and videos from any computer or mobile device on my network, making them more readily available to me. It also lets you set up automatic backups ensuring your photos are always backed up whenever you connect your phone or tablet to Wi-Fi networks. And coming from Google Photos, this felt like a must-have option. The set it and forget it approach is something that I've used for a long time, and it means all of my family members keep all of their photos too, even if there is an issue with a device later down the line, and it's done in the background without them ever knowing. The bonus here is twofold, as it provides an extra layer of security against accidental data loss, compared to a traditional hard drive, which required you to hook up to a PC and manually transfer all your content. Because most cheap external storage options also need to be plugged into Access, I can access my photos on the B station through the mobile application, even when I'm away from home. And when you travel a lot, like I do for work, this is super helpful and allows you to offload photos and videos, especially if you start to run out of storage on your local devices, much like I would with Google Photos anyway. I also really wanted the ability to let those family members store their own files, as I noted. The B station allows me to create user accounts with different access levels, and this lets me share my photo collection with my friends and family while controlling who can see or modify what, and mimics that shared album feature that I really do love on Google Photos. For these reasons, while I will say traditional hard drives offer that lower upfront cost, the B station's features and functionality provide a much more robust and user-friendly solution for managing a large photo collection across multiple people and multiple devices. The most disappointing aspect though of the B station is that it has a completely sealed and relatively slow 5,400 RPM internal drive. Beyond the price, and this is easily one of the biggest and most major drawbacks and could easily be a deal breaker for a lot of you. For raw backups, I think things should be okay, but if you have an incredibly large library, especially above that four terabyte limit, then I would have to say you'll probably look for a more expansive solution. It will be absolutely fine for my specific use case, but it is worth noting that you can expand the storage using the built-in USB port should you need that option. I would love to see Synology though add or remove a user replaceable drive if an updated model does ever get the green light in future though. Some of you are probably shouting at the screen, why don't you set up a real NAS system? Well, I think that would be overkill for most people. And in my case, I think this probably is a little bit too much. That said, I have used the Synology DS923 Plus for quite a long time as my catch-all backup for my video content creation process. While this is intuitive, this isn't as seamless as the app-focused B-Station approach and even has a more exorbitant asking price than this simple NAS, but not quite a NAS solution. Because I had great experience with that specific setup, it meant that I was an intent on trying the B station in the first place. If anyone out there is also wondering, I wouldn't recommend picking up the B station as a Plex server. It actually isn't supported. 
and it actually lacks the power to do real video transcoding on the fly as well. Look at other options if that's something that you would like to do. The B Station relies on an application called B Photos, and this isn't just a storage solution on your phone, it's actually a powerful video management tool that, while impressive, does obviously lack a few of the neat AI powered features Google Photos can tout. That said, I've actually really been surprised at how well it handles what I wanted it to do. Maybe years of Google's cloud storage plan have warped my sense of what other brands could have achieved, but it has impressed me, I must admit. The most important part of the BPhotos application is that it can automatically back up photos and videos. That was the selling point for the application itself. Just like Google Photos, it means I don't really lose anything and it means everything is there available to me when I'm connected to a network. But like 99.9% .9 of products these days, BPhotos does have its own AI baked in to categorize my photos based upon content automatically. It can identify things like landscapes, portraits, objects, and even some faces. This makes searching for specific photos a little bit easier, but it isn't quite as good as Google Photos. It also includes another function that you might recognize, and that is facial recognition groups, making finding photos of specific people an absolute breeze. And I think this is especially helpful for large family gatherings or people with large family libraries, especially if you have trips with multiple friends. Not that I will say I take too many group shots nowadays. Another bonus is that you can also, from the application, download pictures and videos for offline access or add them to your device's camera roll. So you're not limited to just viewing the files themselves within this app. You can take them with you if you want and view them on another device. The thing is, if you're wondering, is this setup worth it? I think while the B Station is actively helping me rid myself of a costly two terabyte Google One subscription plan, it isn't without some pitfalls of its own. I mentioned that slow drive speed, that's one of the biggest ones. I will say this hasn't manifested itself as a major issue, at least at this stage, which is a good thing as it's not very old, but I'm aware that it could be a problem later down the line. And having one sealed drive isn't exactly the greatest design choice environmentally and if you care about data redundancy. I think for that reason, this could be considered a terrible solution if the drive inside fails. Although this is a criticism, you could probably level that external drive backup processes as well. And it's something I have experienced with external drives in the past as well. To put it simply, I'd call this a super basic personal cloud that I think does make it incredibly easy to get started moving backups under your complete control. It's streamlined to do just what it needs to do, nothing more, nothing less. And that makes it an easy recommendation to anyone stressed about setting up their own backup process. Having tested with my tech illiterate parents and my siblings, this has been the easiest way to cut the Google Photos cord and the only pleasant experience I've had trying to do so so far, I must admit. I appreciate there are some major pitfalls, but it could be a really good middle ground for people wanting a similar solution to some offline storage woes. Alternatively, you could just ignore this video and stick with Google Photos. I have to say it's still great for most people especially as it's seamless, it has incredible features, and you do get 15 gigabytes of storage as part of a Google account anyway. Here's the thing, while I do use Google Photos still for some content, especially related to here on the channel, I would rather put my private and personal memories offline, even if this isn't the perfect solution for all situations. I wanna ask you though, have you ditched Google Photos? Are you willing to pay for more cloud storage? Let me know what your solution is down in the comments below. I'm really interested. It's a really fascinating subject, especially as more people are trying to get control of their digital asset libraries. I always appreciate the input from you, our audience, but our legend channel members are on screen here too. I do appreciate you a hell of a lot. Until next time though, thanks for watching and I will speak to you later.